All right, so our next talk is Boylankar, and the title here is The Zeman Effect in Methanol. Hello? Yes. That works. Right. Yes. So, thank you. It's Boilankar, by the way. Thank you. But <laughs> that'll work. Um, yeah, so I'm going to talk about the Zeeman effect in, in methanol. Um, uh, I'm actually. Uh, I've been an astronomer only for, for two months. Uh, I've come from theoretical chemistry and I've worked on the, on the quantum mechanics or the quantum chemistry of the Zeeman effect in methanol um, at the request of my, my current supervisor, uh, Wouter Vlemings. Uh, we work uh, both at, now at the Unstra Space Observatory in, uh, in Gothenburg. And um, methanol, and there's a, this can rotate, yes. Um, methanol is uh, found as a maser around uh, around protostar, and it's uh, it's pretty abundant. Um, uh, the masers can be can be used for for their good brightness and uh, very narrow um, line width, uh, and also good localization and abundance uh, to uh, map out the, the magnetic field around protostars um, uh, by by looking at the Stokes V spectra and by looking at the linear polarization uh, the, to uh, to determine the, the morphology of the, of the magnetic field. Um, but the, the current analysis of the Zeeman, of, of, uh, Zeeman measurements of methanol uh, doesn't include the hyperfine structure of methanol and has uh, very old data uh, on, the, on the actual Zeeman effect, on the, on the Zeeman parameters of methanol. And in the beginning, um, I'm showing you here uh, the, the now famous um, number density against magnetic field uh, uh, strength uh, uh, relation uh, didn't give that m uh, many troubles. As you can see, the, the methanol maser's uh, magnetic fields um, are, are right on the spot, uh, right where you uh, would expect them. Um, uh, these are analysis from 2006 and in 2011, uh, Wouter Flemings, my supervisor, decided to use the right data. Um, he, made a, he made an error. Uh, and uh, came, came out that the magnetic field strength, um, on, uh, based on the analysis, was, was 10 times too, too strong. Uh, so uh, that didn't work out uh, very well. And also, uh, interpretation of the polarization spectra from uh, non Zeeman uh, uh, polarization effects isn't quite, quite satis satisfactory in, uh, in, in, in determining the, the magnetic field. Uh, so, yeah, so uh, we need to determine actually the, the hyperfine structure and the Zeeman effect to, to properly interpret these, uh, these measurements. So I went back for him um, uh, to look at what is known about the hyperfine structure and the, and the Zeeman effect of, uh, of methanol. And there's uh, two papers on the hyperfine structure of, uh, of methanol, one from 1973. Uh, also done in Nijmegen, where I, where, where I did this research um, by, by Heuvel et al. And uh, one from one year, um, uh, one year ago by Kuder. Uh, and the fitting model um, they, they've come up with uh, is still unsatisfactory. Um, the, they have to uh, deviate from the, from the Apennicio values uh, very much. Um, and they can't quite explain how the hyperfine structure of methanol uh, works. And the Zeeman effect uh, only has one uh, uh, article written about it. And it's a very general uh, article. The, the title of the article is The Zeeman Effect in uh, Polyatomic Molecules. And it got uh, polyatomic, polyatomic molecules. And it got five sentences dedicated to the Zeeman effect in methanol, uh, where they investigated um, rotational transitions that don't really occur in major species and give one very general um, Lande G factor that isn't really applicable to uh, the major transitions we're looking, uh, looking for. So there is a, there's a big need for uh, a good theoretical description of the hyperfine structure and Zeeman effect in methanol. And uh, that's uh, what I'm going to talk to you uh, about now.
So the uh, Hamiltonian of, uh, of methanol that's relevant if we uh, that's relevant for um, for the for the major transitions we're we're interested in consists of uh, a rotational part, a hyperfine part, and a Zeeman part. And the rotational part is uh, is kind of complicated because uh, methanol is a molecule that also can rotate internally. That means about the the CO axis, um, the molecule can rotate uh, internally or uh, uh, torsional uh, motion. This is called. Um, and uh, this has been worked out by, by, by Shu et al. To, uh, to a brilliant precision. Um, and we can, yeah, we can use that, that structure as a template to, um, to, to figure out what the hyperfine structure is. Um, the the rota torsion rotational structure is about 10 gigahertz, um, 10 gigahertz wide, which is uh, good to remember. Uh, then the hyperfine structure. Um, the hyperfine structure. Um, uh, consists of the interactions of the magnetic moments of the nuclear spins of the protons in methanol. Um, the C and the O, uh, the C and the, the O atom uh, both have nuclear spin zero, uh, so they don't participate in the hyperfine structure, and um, uh, the, 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 the protons inter interact within each other, which is called the dipole-dipole the -dipole interaction. Um, but there's also uh, interaction with the overall rotation of the molecule. Uh, this is the uh, spin rotation interaction, um, but why uh, the hyperfine structure is so um, so difficult is that um, there is also an interaction of uh, the magnetic moments of the proton with the, with the torsion in, in methanol. So the hyperfine structure is uh, on, on the order of uh, tens of kilohertz, uh, and then the Zeeman effect, which is a non-paramagnetic Zeeman effect, um, so it's proportional to the nuclear magneton is on the order of kilohertz um, per Gauss. And the Zeeman effect also consists of interactions of the magnetic field with the overall rotation, torsion, and the nuclear um, magnetic moments. So we've tried to come up with, uh, with an improved uh, fitting model. And uh, we've done that by um, rederiving all of the terms that, are, that have been used uh, so far in the, in, the, in the fitting models. And we came. Uh, to the conclusion that uh, the Thomas precession um, factors in the old models, uh, they've been um, applied wrongly. Uh, so we fixed that. Um, we, we calculated with uh, quantum chemical uh, methods um, what, the, what, what, the, what the parameters are. And we've uh, worked out how the torsion interacts with, uh, with these uh, magnetic moments. Uh, so we have to reformulate um, the, the torsional operator they've been using in the, in, in the current analysis, um, uh, and thusly also improve the, the fitting parameters. So on the, on the right side, you can see two, two spectra that, that are being found in, uh, in major uh, transitions. Um, uh, these, uh, the, the black lines are, are experimental spectra, and the blue lines those are uh, our calculated um, our calculated transitions with uh, with intensity proportional to how, uh, how how tall the the bars are, and you can see that we um, we find a very good in agreement uh, with uh, with the experiment, uh, and that and that is um, using no unphysical uh, parameters. We did fit the spin torsion uh, parameter because that is not calculable with Epinetia data. So this, this hyperfine structure we've, uh, we've calculated, it's a very good starting point to look further to the, the Zeeman effect. So as I said, the Zeeman effect is uh, the rotation, the overall rotation of the molecule interacting uh, with an external magnetic field, um, but also the torsion um, interacting with, uh, with an ex external magnetic field and the rotational part we can Again, calculate quantum uh, quantum chemically, and these uh, these calculations, I have to say, um, are, are are quite accurate. They're about three percent. Um, uh, they've uh, they've got about a, a deviation from experiment of, of about three percent, and we had to estimate um, the 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 parameters for the for the torsional interaction, and we can can make a very good a, a, a very good estimation on how that is supposed to supposed to look. Then you also have um, the interaction of the, of the nuclear uh, spins with the external magnetic field, and that's calculable from the hyperfine structure. 
So putting all of these interactions together in a, in a Hamiltonian and diagonalize it uh, for a range of uh, magnetic field uh, strengths uh, give you the, the Zeeman effect and give you uh, a figure as displayed on the, on the right side. So this is for uh, magnetic fields of 0 to 100 milligauss. And this is, uh, this is the splitting of, of one particular hyperfine component uh, of, uh, of, of a rotational energy level. This is a rotational energy level found in the 6.7 gigahertz um, transition, uh, which is found very uh, uh, found a lot in, the, in, the, in masers. And as you can see, um, this same effect is nonlinear, um, which is different from, from any other um, currently used maser transitions like like for water, which is linear up until I think three or five Gauss. Um, so it's nonlinear in the regime um, of the magnetic field strengths we try to we try to find find around these protostars. So this requires uh, some more words, uh, some more thought in the modeling of um, Zeeman interactions around protostars. Um, so. But uh, let me first explain why, uh, why this nonlinearity uh, comes up. <coughs> I've displayed on the right side the splitting of, uh, of, of uh, the same, uh, the, the hyperfine splitting of, of this particular energy level. And uh, this is in, in kilohertz. Um, and as you can see, the, the energy levels, or the, the hyperfine energy levels are are very near to each other. They differ in about uh, a kilohertz. And when you turn on a magnetic field, um, these uh, hyperfine states, they start to mix. This has a consequence uh, as the nonlinearity in the magnetic field, but also as a, as a, a very strong consequence for the intensities um, of the, the hyperfine transitions as a hyperfine state is not only defined by one F uh, quantum number, but is a linear combination of, of multiple uh, multiple hyperfine levels. So the uh, radiation transfer modeling um, of, of these major species, uh, they need to be done rigorously. And that's what, we're, that's what we're working on right now to make such, such a rigorous model of uh, major transitions uh, that we're interested in. So I've, I've displayed the conclusion and I think I'm out of time. You are? Yeah. Okay, um, let me just uh, tell you one more thing. Uh, uh, the, the model we've, uh, we've, we've built here is applicable for any major transition um, that we might be interested in. Uh, so I see a bright future ahead for uh, this research. Thank you very much. Uh, I'll say personally, I've been waiting for your paper for five years. So thank you very much. Uh, more questions? Questions. All right. Well, let's thank him again. <laughs>